Looking for a simple way to weave a rug? One without a huge loom? All you need is one of these. So watch today's video and I will show you how. I tell you, I have tried all sorts of looms. I love weaving. I love trying uh, different methods. Today, I am going to show you how to use a peg loom. We have a video on the channel of how you can simply make your own peg loom. This is simply a two by three with some dowels. So watch the video, the link is down below to show you how to make that. But what you end up with is fantastic. This is a rug that I made using the loom. I have several other videos on the channel, different videos on how to make different looms. So check out our playlist because you'll want to um, see those as well. But today I'm going to show you how you can weave this rug using a peg loom. So let's get started. If you're not familiar with a peg loom, basically what a peg loom is, it is a series of pegs that you have your warp cord uh, threaded through. As you weave, you pull off the peg, slide down your weaving down the warp, and put your peg back in the hole. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how you can weave a rug using a peg loom and scrap fabric. So first of all, this is a 24 inch uh, peg loom. With a peg loom, you can make it as narrow or as big as your loom will allow. So for illustration, I'm just going to put a dozen pegs on here and just weave uh, for a little distance, to, but I want to show you how you begin, weave, and end uh, your rug. So we have our warp string. I would pick something, if you're not going to do fringe on your project, pick something that is heavy enough uh, to not break, but light enough to not be seen. If you're going to have fringe on it, then you can pick something a little bit bulkier because you're going to want to see your tassels and your fringe on the end. So today I'm just using number 10 crochet thread, and I have one peg left uh, that we you just simply put your cord through and for, to calculate how long your warp is going to be it's the distance of your project so if you want your rug to be two foot long cut it two times that length so we're going to cut it four foot but we're going to add two more feet to it so no matter what it is it's the length of your project times two plus two so um, we have our cord on here and you just stick it in the hole. The first thing that I'm gonna have you do, on the ends of your warp string, as even as possible, tie a knot. Tie your, your cords together at the end. Uh, this doesn't have to be precise, but just relatively close. I want to be able to weave my cords back into my fabric without them being seen, so a small uh, tail here would uh, be harder to do that. So I have all of my warps have a knot in it, and they don't have to be precise because, let me tell you the why so you can understand it, as we weave, and our fabric is going to slide down here, you're going to be adjusting the uh, this end as well. So at that point, we would take a measuring tape and make sure your ends are the same. Okay, like I said, I'm going to be using fabric. I have cut uh, strips of fabric an inch and a half wide, and you want to go ahead and uh, join a few of them. You don't have to have a continuous uh, row of them, but it does make your weaving go faster if you join a little bit to get started. So you lay them on top of each other, fold it over about three quarters of an inch to an inch, and put just a little snip on the fold there. Now you lay them on top of each other going the same direction and just line up that slit. So there's that one. And you take the tail of your fabric and slip it through. And that is how you join your fabric. Okay, to start the project, I have actually uh, played around with this a lot and uh, the 
best way that I have come up with to make sure that your weaving doesn't slide off and that you don't have to fuss with a string that's missing in the end. The first row is going to be just a little bit more time consuming, but when I use the peg loom, I have the weaving fall away from me. Uh, this is how I would be sitting either in your chair. This sits wonderfully on the arms of your chair and you can weave or set it on a table, but take the end of your fabric and weave it in between in between your warp so let me separate this out so here is a warp here we're going to go in between that one and come up and here is the the warp there so here's your peg and we're going to go in between the warp and come up between the warp on the next one we're going to go down and back up and this is the, you only do this on the first row. I promise it goes a lot faster once we do this. So we're gonna go down in between and up. So if you can make sure you can see what I'm doing here, in between the warps, we're just making sure that our fabric is uh, going between those strings. Okay, I'm gonna hold that and pull it and I am going to tie this to this first outside warp just nice and uh, loose nothing fancy but and give it a nice tail so that you can feed it in later so here is your warp string and we are tying your uh, fabric to it and I'm just going to slide it up there we go to start weaving you uh, simply start by going in and out of each of these pegs. So the first row um, is, this is gonna be a little loose, uh, which will tighten up um, in the end, so no worries. So you just go in and out of the pegs. You get down to the end, you go around, and just come back. So you can see that there's fabric on each side of the peg and so that's one way to know if you have uh, done it correctly. I have uh, skipped a couple pegs and you look and it becomes obvious. So just a glance and make sure you're going on each side of the peg. So you do that for uh, a few inches before you pull them off of the peg. So I'm just gonna keep going. And this is why having continuous fabric is kind of fun uh, because this is not going in fast motion on the, the camera. This is actual speed because the fabric is already attached. Oops, see there, I missed. So you just catch yourself to make sure that you're going every other one. And I just find that it feel, it works to uh, hold my finger in place there to keep the fabric down from slipping off. Okay, I am going to pull these off. There's um, multiple ways that you can do this. When I um, pull them off, it doesn't matter if I'm on the end, middle, or other end, but I'm going to, on this one, come around and just go in one because you want to continue with the same motion after you've pulled off your cord. So I'm going to pull off this first peg and you just pull it and you slide it back into the hole. Pull off your peg and slide it back in the hole. This uh, fabric here needs to continue in this motion, so I'm going to leave it laying that way so I know that it goes to the next, uh, around this next one. So pull all of these out, just as uh, nothing fancy. Okay, you lay it back down. So there's the beginning of your project. This is coming through this hole here. 
So you just continue where you left off on your weaving. Okay, it's getting down to the end, so I'm going to change colors and show you how simple it is to change colors. I like changing on the end, so I am going to give this just a, an inch or so trim there and attach a new color just as, um, just as you have been joining your other fabrics. And now you're ready to continue with the new color. So just go around your end and continue with your new color. I'm going to do a little different camera angle here so that you can see the removing of the pegs. This time I'm going to leave the cord in the center so that you can see what happens there. So go ahead and pull off your peg and just stick it back in the hole and you just sometimes your thread your warp thread or your fabric will get caught when you stick the peg back so just uh, make sure and so if you're concerned that you're going to lose this uh, cord go ahead and just uh, weave your the rest of your row and let it set off while you remove the rest of your pegs so there we have a really good start at a project. And so don't worry about pushing it um, to, down to the bottom yet. I'm gonna go a few more uh, rows here and when I turn back on the camera, I'll show you um, how to adjust your sizing and finish it off. I'm gonna go ahead and end my sample here. So I have went across I have enough fabric to go uh, across one more time, but I'm not going to do that until I take off my last row of weaving. So I'm gonna take these off. Now you have uh, your cords that need to be fastened off again. And I'm going to slide this away from my end so now we're going to end just like we began. You're going to take your weaving and you're going to put it in between your warp just like you did in the beginning. So you're going to separate your cord here and put your fabric through all the way across. And I'm just going to pull up the slack so that it's about the same distance. Okay, so now that we have it there, we're just going to work our project down to this end, to our original warp end. And that's why we wanted them kind of even. This is where you can adjust sideways, make sure everything is nice. And yeah, we're getting there. Now I'm going to cut one at a time and tie a little knot and try to make it as precise as possible. So this is showing roughly nine inches. So I'm going to tie a double knot there. And going to do this end and we have nine inches there as well looks like everything's nice and tight I'm going to tie a knot that looks good so I'm going to continue and do that on each of them cut the uh, warp cords and tie a knot and then I will show you how we finish it off at this point, you can make fringe. Um, you can add more string to it if you wanted to be, have it be bulkier. Uh, you can um, tie a couple together. So depending on your project, you can make that decision. If you want to uh, have no fringe, just take a crochet hook and weave in the uh, fabric, grab a hold of a tail, 
and pull it back through and I'm going to make it go clearer back so that we don't have anything peeking out. There we go. And then just cut off your ends at that point. Your beginning and your ending uh, fabric, same thing. We're just going to feed it into your uh, cording that's um, there for your warp. So just take your crochet hook and just fuss with it a little bit and pull it through so that it is nice and secure. And uh, you might even want to uh, take it and have it go down your project as well. So just the best way to hide your ends and keep it secure all at the same time. But here is a um, finished rug that I did. This rug ended up being 22 inches by 28 inches and I kind of kept track of my uh, remnant pieces of fabric and I'm guessing there's about three to three and a half yards of fabric in this rug. Uh, but I really love, absolutely love the simplicity, how it turned out. It's nice and thick. Uh, so while you're doing your project, if you have any tips or tricks that you can share with me uh, to on projects that you've done, or if you have any questions, please comment down below. But as always, thank you for watching DIY on the house.